last like year or so um i've been experiencing like command hallucinations and getting voices in my head i was hearing my grandparents and my uncle who passed away they were pretty good grandparents we always used to go to the house and they always had like lollies and chocolate fudge in there for us I don't really remember much of my uncle because um, he passed away when I was four in a car crash. I remember stating from a very young age that I sort of felt aware of these certain energies. You know, I always feel like I've got someone here and someone here and they're just sort of right there with me, you know? To think your whole life that you're weird and to be put into these boxes, nobody understands because I don't even understand myself. There was too much going on upstairs and I couldn't handle it. Things just got quite overwhelming. I was about three years old and I started seeing things. So I grew up with it, but it was my queen that sort of guided me along and how to handle it. I think sometimes there's a misunderstanding in cultures. We have a westernised paradigm that's come to our country and the model of care. And then you're asking, are you seeing things? For heaven's sake, my culture can see things with five different senses might even be more. In church we tend to pray and believe what's unseen. But when it comes to somebody actually being able to work with people, it becomes something else. <laughs> There's some challenges about how do you employ someone into a tohunga role? How do you know who's a tohunga? There are often Pākehā organisations making these decisions. What's the job description for a tohunga? Te Whare Māori is a kaupapa Māori mental health service. The aim is to try and include both a clinical perspective as well as a cultural perspective. As a doctor, I'm wanting to be careful to do the right thing. I'm automatically focusing more on the things that fit in with my paradigm. In a way, I'm doing things in my Pākehā way, and I'm relying on my colleagues, cultural workers, kaumātua, to help make sure we don't miss out the Māori part as well. I started working at Whare Māori in 2005. About a month later, Wiramu started working here. He struck me as a pretty friendly guy. Whenever we were in the kitchen and he was there, everyone was laughing. <laughs> yeah. um, and I'm a pretty serious guy, so I quite like that. I'd gone to see the manager and said, look, give me everybody who identifies with Māori and having spiritual stuff and let me work with them. Don't give me a caseload, just give me the people. A young person that Wiramu met had Māori on one side of his family and Cook Island Māori on the other side. He was heading off to school. Suddenly he saw this man who was shouting at him. He knew that this guy who was, looked a bit like a warrior was shouting at him in Te Reo Māori. It's a bit unusual when someone is describing an experience where they're seeing the vision and hearing it at the same time this young person had gone to school and his Māori teacher at school had organised for a tohunga to come into the school and the tohunga had done karakia with him and the visions had gone away. That doesn't make sense from a psychiatric point of view if it's a psychotic symptom. 
why would it go away? Wiramu was explaining to me that it was, it was immediately clear to him that this young fellow had done something and the experience was a consequence of what he'd done. Wiramu asked the young fellow, something's happened here or you've done something. The young man said, well, yeah, a few weeks ago I found this piece of ponamu on the road and I picked it up and put it around my neck because it was a nice looking piece of ponamu. And Wiramu's response was, that's the answer. He wanted to explain to this young fella and help him understand the Māori concepts that would help him make sense of this so he didn't have to feel afraid of it. And the solution is to dispose of the Pōnamu appropriately. Wiramu said to me, you know, if you want to understand this, you can think about it as if it was a spiritual germ that this young person picked up. Later on, I realised that Wittemu was using a medical metaphor to help me as a doctor understand a spiritual concept. And so all these concepts, if you understand them, it starts to become logical. Basically, I believe the people that come in are the ones who are the experts. It's about making people believe that they can be helped. So they know their needs. And all you get to do is facilitate a little bit of the resources and let them find their own way. Traditionally in psychiatry, there would be a focus on discouraging someone from responding to their voices or taking them seriously. Wittemu has an approach which acknowledges the fact that something's there and let's work on your relationship with that thing, let's work on your relationship with your own mana. The gift that they said that um, I have, or what I think is like, I, I can like talk to like voices in my head and that, and like people that aren't even here, people who have passed away. I started rapping like um, when I got admitted into hospital, and then I started making beats, music, it takes my mind off things. somebody that was really dear to your heart or something that was dear to your heart, it'll be traumatic. Hey. Trauma leads to despair, uh, despair, depression, anger, and it's just about striking out at the world. Uh, so first things first, to the woman that I thank for my birth, to the people that were there to care for, this mother that will be my earth. To the brother to the by my side, like there on the day that I die. I know that we may lose touch, but these are the days of our lives. Obviously, growing up at 16, if you sort of keep it hidden, you know, keep it dark, and then to find someone like Wittemu who's going, yeah, 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 I can see that. He, he pointed out the, the lady standing behind me on my left, and then after that, pointed out, uh, you know, a stronger, tall man standing behind me. Before Wittemu even said these things, he goes, that's your grandmother. She's sitting there in, in, in a nice black dress with white embroidery. She's got a stern but kind look on her face and tight pulled back hair into a tight bun. For him to be able to confirm that stuff in the room for me was like, Woo. A gift of being able to see loved ones or seeing things taking place that never been told to anybody else. It brings up a belief in somebody that, whoa, how did they know that unless I can be helped? It's about giving the, the options to the person and allowing the person to decide and make their own decisions to get well. For me, I'd only felt these energies and you, you'd never been in a situation to be able to talk about these sort of things and you can feel it, you know it's there. You know, people try to tell you it's not there. I got diagnosed with PDD and ADHD, dyslexia, and they're like, yo, here's, chuck another one in there. You know, he's bipolar too, yeah, you know. And I did it and I took all the pills and they numbed me out. 
it's, it's not actually anyone else's fault, it's just the fact that that's how they were taught, you know, to like respond to me. There's a lot of them in these units now that maybe a little bit of understanding that they wouldn't have been there. I'm not saying that, that, that that's a wrong thing. There are some people that really, really need help. But then we need some help on understanding that part. Our way to a tongue and our spirituality. There are a lot of people now who want more knowledge about cultural stuff. And it's more open to that now.